Cleaning and maintaining the AR-15 rifle is extremely important because of the direct impingement system. And gas and debris and carbon will build up, especially on your bolt. That's the most important part. So we're going to go through different aspects of what you need to clean and what you need to lube on your rifle. Now here are the tools and the cleaning supplies that I'm going to be using for this project. I typically use frog lube and I love this stuff. It's great. But what I'm going to do is I want to reach as many people as possible and use just what I've used for years just to show you how to do it in the traditional way. So this just kind of covers all the bases. Of course, the first thing you do is always check to make sure that the gun is unloaded and check the chamber. Remove the upper from the lower. It makes it a lot easier. Then pull your bolt carrier group out of the back. Now we're going to focus most of our attention on the bolt, and that's because the bolt is the most dirty. It gets the dirtiest when you're shooting, and of course that's because through the gas key all your gas comes down and comes out through the ports and goes through your bolt carrier and into your bolt. But one of the things I want to warn you against, and a lot of guys do this, and to their success, is to run their AR-15s pretty wet. Me personally, I like to run them just right, just enough lube to keep them running right. This keeps from all the buildup of the carbon and debris all through your bolt and your upper receiver. We're going to take the firing pin retaining pin out. Drop your firing pin. Take your bolt, make sure it's in the rear position. Take your cam pin and turn it and then go ahead and just pull it out. Then remove your bolt. Now you can use your firing pin but I like to use a small punch to remove my extractor just push it through lift off the extractor there's a rubber seal right here you can take that off and just make sure it's clean but you want to leave your spring in your extractor one important area to check is your extractor right here in this little shelf and just make sure it's clean and free of debris this is what pulls the spent case out of your chamber I'm going to take a little nylon brush you may need to use a little solvent in case there's some buildup. Next, you can see right here under the extractor, there's some brass buildup. We're just going to clean it up. Get your bolt face. Okay, I'm going to take a little Q-tip and I'm going to put some solvent on the bolt. Get it nice and get some of this debris off of this. Right here is one area in particular where carbon builds up. And so we're going to want to make sure we get that carbon off. Sometimes the solvent will take a lot of it off, and sometimes you have some really tough spots. Using something like a carbon scraper, like this bronze carbon scraper on this mutt, and I had a little demonstration on it before, just making sure that all that's cleaned off. You don't want to use steel, or at least a hardened steel, because you don't want to scratch up your bolt, and you want to keep this really good and clean. And you just want to wipe this down when you get finished to get to remove the solvent. Wipe down all the areas, your cam pin. Firing pin is a really important place to make sure and inspect. And of course you're inspecting the whole time you're cleaning. Make sure you get your bolt and in the inside where the firing pin fits into your bolt carrier. Get that with solvent. A lot of buildup happens there on the inside of your bolt carrier. I use these really long Q-tips and uh, they work really great but you can use regular Q-tips as well. You can also use pipe cleaners and especially in the channel where the firing pin goes it really works great. Getting the inside with solvent. You can go into your gas key just make sure that you get some of the debris out. I wouldn't lube it I would just take a dry pipe cleaner and just get the residue off. Go ahead and clean off your bolt carrier. Any kind of debris that's on there, you want to just get rid of it. You really want to wipe this down good and get that solvent off of there once it kind of settles and gets rid of the any kind of debris or carbon. Pipe cleaners are invaluable, being able to get down in your where your firing pin channel is. You can see the pipe cleaner coming through. We're going to go ahead and install the extractor onto the bolt. Put it into place, line up your holes. Go ahead and push it through. Tapping it in just to go ahead and get it through. Just make sure that you have it even. Nothing sticking out. You want to make sure your gas rings are spaced as well. Making sure that little gaps are not all together. We're going to put just a little bit of oil on the body of the bolt. And we're going to just wipe it with our hands and the locking lugs. 
and we're going to wipe off the excess. You want it to be lubed, not soaked. Now some of the lubrication on your bolt is going to transfer into the body of the bolt carrier. Making sure, of course, that your extractor is about here at the 10 o'clock and your ejector is over here at about the 4 to 5 o'clock. Go ahead and drop just a little bit of oil on your cam pin. We're going to go ahead and slide it into place. And then go ahead and turn it. A light coat of oil on your firing pin, not a whole lot, just a light coat. And get rid of that excess. Slipping it into place. Making sure that it's fully seated. You've got oil on your fingers, just go ahead and rub the little uh, firing pin retainer pin. Slip it into place. And then I'm going to put some oil right here on these rails. Because you'll notice on your bolt after a while that you're going to have wear here and here. And also where the hammer slides on the bottom of the bolt carrier. Make sure those areas are touched up. In fact, in this area right here, this is where your buffer spring retainer pin runs through this. And you're going to want to make sure there's a little bit of oil here to keep wear down. We can see there's a little bit of wear right here on your gas key. You want to make sure that's taken care of too. Anywhere you see any wear, bolts all clean and ready to go. We're going to reattach the upper just so we can go ahead and clean the barrel. To clean the chamber, I like to use some of these Tabco star patches. These are fantastic. You can use different kinds of brushes to get in there, but I find this is the best. Now I'm not worried about getting a little extra in here because some of it will go down into the barrel. We're going to slide into the locking lugs and then we're going to turn. Gently pulling it out, that way it doesn't get stuck in the chamber, but if it does you can pop it right back out. And this also, you can bring this up through your receiver, your upper receiver, and be able to clean as well. I typically use a bore snake just to run through the bore, but I'm going to put a little solvent on here. I don't like to get it on my bore snake, so I'm going to use a regular cleaning rod, running it through the chamber. And then I'm going to let that just soak just for a minute while I'm working on a couple of other things. The lower doesn't get that dirty, so you just want to wipe it down, wipe off your hammer face, check see if there's any kind of debris or anything. Mainly you just want to get it cleaned up. The areas you want to focus on are right around the, the hammer and the trigger pin where the spring is. Just make sure there's a little bit of oil right there and where the disconnect. A little bit goes a long way. And you want to do it just a little, not a whole lot. running just a little bit of oil on the hammer face because not only does it ride under the bolt carrier it also strikes your firing pin just to keep any kind of corrosion down and to keep it clean and while you're here you can go ahead and just put a little bit of coat of oil and rub it in with your fingers getting rid of the excess you also want to do that with your takedown pin the buffer spring could use just a very light coat of oil no big deal Again, you can just put, run a little bit on it and then take your hand and just rub the spring itself, just giving it a little bit of lubricity. And then just put it back in. Okay, I'm going to take a dry patch, make sure that solvent is out of the bore. When it comes out the end of the bore, I like just to go ahead and pull the patch off instead of pulling it back through. You want to repeat this until the patch starts coming out clean. Once the solvent's out, I put just a little bit on my bore snake. You can do that a couple of times and it really cleans it up. It's according to what kind of bore snake you have, but a lot of these have little fibers and things that pick up any kind of debris or carbon buildup.
Now I'm going to take one of these star patches and just make sure that I get everything cleaned out. Just a good clean one, nothing on it. You don't want to get a lot of lubrication in your chamber. That can cause a little bit of a problem. You're going to have some on your bolt. You can kind of go around the outside of the chamber as well. Here we go. And then go ahead and get the inside of your upper. Now the upper receiver is pretty clean. So I don't really want to dump a bunch of solvent down here. So I'm going to take just a little bit of brake free. Take my brush and just give it a little bit of cleaning for anything that might be left in there. Then you can wipe out any excess that's in the upper receiver. A little touch at your trigger guard pin. At your magazine release. And a little bit right here at your bolt release. Also at your dust cover. A little bit at the pin, the spring. The catch. A little bit at your forward assist. Your gas key on your bolt carrier group runs into your charging handle. So you want just a little dab here and then just make sure it's good and cleaned out. A little bit will go a long way, so not in excess. I'll go ahead and wipe things down after I've lubed them. The lube will penetrate and you're going to be good to go. Right here at the receiver extension or the buffer tube. Go ahead and get that locked into place and check it out. One place it's easy to miss if you have A2 sights or even Magpul backup sights or different Troy or whatever you have is to make sure that they are also lubricated because it's steel and most of them will call, have problems with the springs and you don't want any rust to go on. And your front sight. Again, a little bit goes a long way. Here at the sling swivel, I've seen ARs before right in here to have a little bit of rust start to come up when they've been sitting. So you want to make sure you keep your eye on these places. Uh, just a little bit of oil on them doesn't hurt. Just a very light sheen. Again, you don't. the more you put on here though, the more it attracts dirt and grime. So be very conservative. And because we have a removable carry handle, you may want to put just a little bit in the threads. We're going to return our charging handle. Get our bolt into place. Lock it down. Now there are a lot of different philosophies on cleaning your AR-15 and this is just the way that I do it. Uh, you know, you have every one of your military branches, they do it differently. You have law enforcement and then you have your civilians and the guys that just eat, breathe, and sleep AR-15s, which I'm probably one of them. But there are a lot of different ways, but the main thing is, is to make sure you maintain your rifle and you keep it in good working order because if you ever need it, you'll be glad you did. Some like to run them wet. I personally like to run mine a little on the dry side. But whatever your philosophy is, if you take it out to the range and shoot it, you'll figure out what works best for you. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. The bolt carrier and the the bolt and carrier. The bolt and the bolt carrier are your most now most of your time needs to be spent with the bolt and bolt carrier. And that's because okay. now I like to not in ex not in excess. A little bit will do go on.